Excellently done. You beat me. I was trying as well. <laughs> hey, everybody. It's August 22nd, and you're here at the weekly Chaos Community Call. Glad to see everybody here. Thanks for showing up. Good to see you. I hope everyone's having a good day. And quick reminder, um, like all chaos meetings, this is under our chaos code of conduct. So keep that in mind. And of course, cameras on or off, whatever you want to do is super fine with us. We don't care at all. Uh, here are the minutes. If you need a link to these in the chat, just ask and somebody can drop them in for you. No big deal at all. And if you want to add your name to the agenda and tell us about your pineapple on pizza preference, a lot of alliteration there. Um, yeah, that'd be great. You don't have to, you know, maybe you don't have an opinion on it. That's totally fine too. It is a little bit controversial, I will say, but um yeah okay let's go on to our agenda we have a really light agenda today so if you do have items you want to add on there please feel free to do that um, that's what these meetings are for so um, we'd love it if you want to just add some stuff um first i wanted to just let everybody know in case you had not heard we do have a new channel for project management so if it's something that you're interested in contributing um, on or want to just hang out with the project managers you can do that here there's a link to the slack channel um, and we are going to start regular meetings um i think tomorrow is that right i think are we start we are starting it tomorrow is that right is there somebody on here who can verify that for me we're starting on the 30th 30th okay right yes right because i couldn't make tomorrow right yeah thank you <laughs> i need i need uh someone to yes help me a lot um anyway so i should put this in here starting august 30th and the idea behind this is to have a group of folks that can help kind of just manage all of the sub projects going on at chaos um small things like our, our newcomer slack bot or um bigger things like our onboarding courses um just people who can kind of help us get organized and figure out who's doing what and make sure we're kind of just keeping on track with that so that first meeting, we're going to try to decide what tool to use moving forward. Um, maybe it'll be Trello, maybe it'll be something else. Um, we are talking about that in the Slack channel as well. So if you have opinions on that and you're uh, wanting to join that group, feel free to do that and join us. Um, it'll just be here, of course, on the Chaos Zoom, like all the other Chaos meetings. Are there any questions about project management? Nope. All right. Fair enough. Moving along to the next one, we have um, we still have passes to all things open, and I um, I know it's difficult for folks to get there. Some folks. So um, if we don't end up using these, I didn't know if people have suggestions on if we. I don't know. Do we want to offer them to anybody in our context working groups, or um, you know, just keep keep offering them out there to our community, like. I'm not sure. I hate I hate for them to go unused. Um, I don't know if we're able to transfer them to people who aren't in chaos. I don't know about that. Um, but I just would love to hear um, some, you know, some some comments from you all on if we don't end up using these, what we could do with them. Is that still in Raleigh, Durham? It is. It's in Raleigh. Yeah. So when I registered using one of those passes. They didn't ask me anything chaos specific, so I'm guessing, you know, we can share them. I think maybe offering them in the context groups would be nice. I think there are several folks that might have an interest in attending all things open. Okay. Yeah, typically we can offer those to whoever we want. I've seen companies like give them to people who, you know, um, underrepresented groups who maybe wouldn't have been able to go otherwise. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, there, I know there are. Um, there's a couple companies that are chaos adjacent that are in that area. If we can't find people to travel there, Red Hat's one of them. Um, SAS is actually got an open source program office now, um, and would, would could pro probably find people to use them. So, um, if do y'all know Ruth Seely? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so she's the ASPO director at SAS, getting that going and. So I think if we run out of options and you still have passes, you could offer them to Ruth and she'd probably be able to give them to some people that 
just to expose SAS to open source a little more. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, th I think she took a challenging job there. I also have two tickets that need to find homes. Awesome. Okay. Will you be there, Katie? No, okay. I'm not able to make it. And I was, um, because I submitted a CFP and it wasn't accepted, they gave us two tickets. Oh, nice. Okay. So future reference, if anybody wants tickets there and if you submit a CFP, even if you're not accepted, you'll probably get free tickets. <laughs> They're so well, great there. I that's just, a good point. I probably have free tickets that for the same thing because my talks didn't get accepted either. You, you could uh, you, you could just submit a proposal that says chicken, 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 chicken. Chicken, 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 Probably chicken, not chicken. That, Sean. <laughs> I, I think they'd see that you're a game in the system, Sean. <laughs> nice try. Uh, probably. Yeah, There's smart right. people over there. Yeah. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> Do not mistake their kindness for weakness, Sean. Yeah, or, yeah, or stupidity, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, great. Okay, that's awesome. And then maybe we'll say, like, I don't know, September 15th or something. This would be like a month before we'll cut off the date. Does that seem fair? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. Any other questions, comments, something to say about all things open? Okay. I'm trying to close windows so my Zoom stops getting blocked. Um, okay, so I uh, just wanted to throw this out there um, on Dawn's behalf, I guess, um, just a reminder about the new data science meetings, and there was the very first one already happened. So we do have a new playlist. If you are a YouTuber and you want to subscribe to a playlist, you can do that. Um, here's actually all of our playlists. If you want to just sign up for something that you're interested in, you can do that here. Um, I will drop the link here in chat just in case people don't know that that's a thing. And we do, um, of course, record and post all our meetings. So um, if you just want to care about certain ones, you can just subscribe to them. If you can't make it. Um, Don, do you want to? Is there anything you want to say in addition to that? I'll give you a little space. If not, that's cool. No, not really. We'd love to have people join us. So you can copy it from the Chaos Calendar onto your calendar so you don't forget. That'd be great. That sounds good. All right. Any questions for Don or anything about the data science meetings? I will say the first one was awesome and very productive. So yes, they're going to be good. You don't want to miss them. Okay, moving on, I see survey themes and I'm guessing that's from Matt. Yeah, so can you stop your share really fast? I can. I'm happy to. All right. So um, this was kind of coming from the survey. This is by by no means done. I just wanted to put these in front of people. Um, so thanks for you know Sean and Ruth and Christy who have also been taking a look at at this data. So this was from the survey. Do you remember the survey we did a while back with respect to kind of asking questions about ourselves and how we can improve the chaos project. And so these are some of the themes that were kind of coming out of that. And so the idea here is that we'll express what those themes are here. Um, and then in addition, kind of talk about what we're doing in the chaos project, or may maybe what we could do if we're not doing it currently in the chaos project to address um, some of these themes. And so you can just kind of see, you know, I, I'm guessing these are a lot of uh, things that we are working on. I'm also guessing that some of them are probably pretty consistent with larger open source projects like the Chaos Project, like continuing to improve uh, communication. Uh, that's kind of that first one, thinking about how work is done in our working groups. Um, and then, you know, the newcomer and, and community member experiences are those the three and four. So, I, you know, I'm guessing those are probably recurring. I do think these are things that we have been thinking about in the chaos project, but I just wanted to put this in front of in front of everybody. So and that's again, it. early draft, but yeah, early draft. 
And I think, yeah, when I looked at the early draft, I'm like, we've done a lot of these things. What's that? When I looked at it, I was like, wow, we started doing a lot of these things. Exactly. I think we are trying to address a lot of these things. So for example, around newcomer experience, like trying really working on that, you know, where to begin and trying to promote new opportunities for people. I think this is something we've been very conscious of, um, particularly over the last six months, year. So I think we're making um, good progress there. I think one of the kind of the recurring things that I'm seeing here is like, just how do we how do we represent the work that we're doing to people um, and organize it in such a way that's sensible for folks? Yeah, Sophia. I was just a little bit curious about sort of our response rate in total counts. I didn't share that in there. I'm just thinking about Dom right now and her active survey. And if we learned anything about recruiting and fielding a survey across the chaos community that we could also share with others that might be doing similar things. Yeah, I don't have that. Sean, do you have that in front of you? The response uh, of Elizabeth even, maybe? Um, I downloaded them recently, so I should be able to find them if you do. Yeah, I'd have to dig it out. Move on to the next topic, and I will get that for you. Not an immediate answer for you, Sophia. I, That's I okay. Have, it well, gives me an order of magnitude, like 20, 40, 100, 200. Like, I what are this, we talking about? I have the spreadsheet. I just have to count rows. Okay. I would love it if somebody could share the raw data with me. The spreadsheet with the raw data, that'd be fab. That'd be Sean. Yeah, I can do that. Thanks. So that's I it. Poke, I want to poke through the comments. 50, 57 responses. I had to do a 57? little 57? Yeah, because it starts and on do, six. Do you remember which channels you distributed it through? Uh, I don't, but I didn't distribute it. I, I can I'm answer that. Um, okay. Mostly through our blog and at ChaosCon EU last year. And okay. LinkedIn and probably Twitter at that time, I would guess. And I think okay. we, did, um, we did promote it a few times. But um, yeah, we had it open for about a month, I think. Okay. So I remember seeing it in meetings and in a few other places, but that's that's good perspective. I don't, I don't know. Don, I'm thinking about your project mostly, honestly, of just like how you're how you're reaching people currently and whether or not we have more channels that we haven't considered for distribution of your survey. Yeah, thank you. Oh, no, I, I appreciate that. Um, yeah, thank and you. for reference, we have 14 responses for for the survey about the software right now. I, th I think if we uh, spread that out around uh, OSS EU, we should, well, I guess that's farther away than December, September 12th, but I would think that would be a good play to, place to Maybe have like a little scan, one of those little square scan things that people could scan on their phone and just automatically take the survey. QR code. Yes. Yeah, thank you. VR code. Okay. A QR right. code. Yeah. So that that's that's a really code. good that's a really good idea. So um, maybe maybe I just don't close the survey when I come back from vacation on the twelfth, and that we leave it open through OSSEU, and because we're not. We're not in any hurry. I mean, I can look at the data and we can start working on some some stuff that's there. There's some themes that are coming out already. So it doesn't it doesn't gate us on on anything. There's no there's no reason not to leave it open for longer if we think agreed. that's gonna be beneficial. Yeah, agreed. Okay, so what I'll do, I'll generate a QR code. I've done that for other stuff before. And I will distribute that to all of you who happen to be speaking and ask you to include a slide um, encouraging people to take the survey. Uh, good idea. I will, I will do that and send it out to, to everybody who's going to be speaking there. It is Tuesday. That's when I get my good ideas. Sophia, I will also say um, that our community survey was pretty long. Like it was several pages long and asked a lot of questions. So I think we we estimated like a seven to 10 minute time frame, if I if I remember correctly. It, so it wasn't like a quick thing. So um, I'm sure Don Hopefully Don's is a, is a lot shorter. I think hers is like a page. So um, there is the difference there too. I just want to highlight that as well. Yeah, the the survey that we have now about the software, um, you can probably complete it in like two or three minutes. If you want to give us a lot of words, maybe five or 10, but it's super short by design. So maybe um, for, uh, Matt, going back to the community survey, maybe that's something when we run it again that we keep in mind, because I think we did. I mean, we can look at how many people abandoned it 
Um, right. But I think it was not a, not a, it was not zero. We'll <laughs> say that. So right. maybe just making it a little easier. Okay. So. And if, Don, if you find any data like abandonment missing, let me know. We may have filtered columns out, but I don't think we did. Okay, cool. Thanks. Um, do you want to put that as an action item anywhere, Don, about your, I'll just put AI Don to create QR code. For survey. Yeah, and I'll do that. I'll do that when I get back from vacation and send it out to people the week before um, OSSEU so that people don't forget. Well, you don't, you don't have to do it. AI Don is doing it. <laughs> all right. <laughs> As well, Don, we also have all things open. We'll have a, a booth there. So we, you know, happy to keep oh, yeah. it for that. That's in October, though. So I don't know if you want to keep it open that well, long. Let's but... see. Let's see how many responses we get after um, OSSEU and then decide. Sounds good. Okay, um, so we did this one. Website updates. Who put this on here? Uh, me. So okay. I just wanted to, Banat, I just, there were a couple PRs that you had put in. And I just wanted to, I, I know you're super busy, like getting, getting things set up and all that kind of stuff. I just wanted to make sure you had seen those. Yeah, I just saw them. I'm Saddling down, so I will be coming back to them and I will work on them. So, yeah, within this week, I'll uh, sort those out. Okay. Uh, you're, you think you're settling down, but welcome to hurricane season, my friend. <laughs> I mean, my hope would be, and I, I, Kevin, I don't know if you're on still, um, that we might want to just restart that. The yes. do we need to have another meeting just to it sounds maybe like a, it feels like we're really close anyway. Yeah, maybe just one or two meetings, uh, then we'll be done mostly. Okay. I, I feel the same way. Yes. Okay. Do we when was that? You remember? Like it, the time? They were on Wednesday, I I think. Yeah, they were on Wednesday morning okay and we could put that back on the calendar maybe just even like since, a couple since you have pointed on the calendar i have a question for the entire community that can maybe help me so if i want to uh, if i add chaos calendar to my new calendar it populates all the meetings and my calendar is visible to the other people in the department so i don't want to show all other meetings how can I add just one or two meetings that I regularly attend for the chaos? So, so that people at your university don't see it? Don't see all the meetings, like uh, because our calendar is shared within the department so that they can book a new meeting with us as a faculty. I see. Um, you... So I don't want to show all the chaos meeting. I just want to show like this meeting, which I regularly attend. And you know, like, some you, just, you just add the individual meeting to your calendar. Here's a here's a pro tip, Fanad. Um, just tell them that you use your personal calendar to track your meeting because you have life and work, and so your calendar at work is not up to date, and they have to ask you about a meeting, and and that <laughs> way you avoid people seeing open time on your calendar as an automatic chance to take up your time. Oh, good luck with that. <laughs> I tried. I've it's, never had that work. <laughs> it's work. It's worked for me for fifteen years. <laughs> John, you and I are in a different board now. It's still yeah. Right <laughs> yeah. yeah. When I when I worked at Intel, I literally had to book my lunch because people would and, and mark it as private because people would be like, "Oh, I saw you were just having lunch, so I booked a meeting during your lunch." And I would be in meetings for eight hours straight, no break. <laughs> And I get sending, grumpy if I don't eat. I'm sending you. A, I'm sending oh. you a Slack message, Vinod, that is oh. of critical importance. No. Not about this, but in general, Vinod. There on the video, you can see you can just add that one. You just, yeah, you just go to the calendar and then you click on the meeting that you want, and then you can just okay. click on copy to my calendar. And that's okay. actually for anybody because I know other people have had that same question, Vinod. So, yeah, it's a good one. Thank you. Thank you for clarifying. I was like, I have to find out some ways. So. Okay, so that was that. And then I will pull, I will go back and restart them on. Yeah, yeah maybe just, maybe just two, like maybe not into perpetuity, just yeah. a couple. Okay. Yep. 
Cool. Okay, and the next thing's me as well. Um, so I just wanted to put this out there for everybody to think about um, the context groups. So this is the OSPO working group and the university working group and the science working group. Uh, they've been received real, real well. So we have really great turnout um, at the meetings with a lot of really great discussion across all of these different groups. So I just, I think the, just the thought for everybody is how can we continue to support these, these groups to be successful? Um, and in that case, success meeting, just continuing to help uh, support the work that, that they're doing. So how metrics can help make meaningful decisions in their particular context or inform uh, decision-making. So just for anybody, if you have ideas about how to continue to make these groups uh, more successful, don't hesitate to, to let me or Elizabeth or anybody know. Um, so anyway, that's all that that was. And they can also join the Slack channels too and pop things in there as well. Yeah, sure, of course, yep. Awesome. Any comments about this right now? Just for people to think about is really all that I'm I'm asking for there. Okay. And then the next one is also me and it's kind of the same thing. So one of the, we've been talking a little bit about um, like onboarding courses that we would run through Moodle. And thanks to Sean, um, we just kind of officially made the chaos dot whatever Moodle Moodle Cloud, I believe. Moodle Cloud.com. So that's a we've we've paid for that. So we're out of the trial version and we're now paying for that. It's not a lot of money, but um I think one of the things that that if people have ideas as well, um Moodle. <laughs> Sorry, it just has like a strange sound, and I was like, "Are they saying Moodle?" I don't know what they're saying. Saying Moodle. No, it's Poodle. It's Poodle Cloud. Wait a minute. Sorry, Let me see if that's available. Thanks for clarifying that. It sure. It, you know, it's like Canvas. It's just it's not Canvas, but it's like a learning management tool where we can gotcha. do. It. I see. I see. Yeah. Now, now I've I found it online. Now I just was gotcha. trying to look it up and was really confused. So thank you. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Um, so I think one of the things that, that again, kind of like the context groups, if you have ideas, like how, how can we make a class like, you know, open source 101 or hello world open source that is abstract enough that could be a course that kind of talks about participating in open source very generally. So kind of like the different context groups that we have, you know, the ways that say open source works in a corporate OSPO versus the ways that um, open source works in say scientific software spaces, they're naturally going to be very different. And so I think, you know, if we tailored a class towards the corporate OSPO, it doesn't really capture the entirety of what open source is and same with scientific software or the university context. So I think we, if we're going to do a course, we're going to need to abstract a little bit about how we think about what open source means and how it would be meaningful in these different contexts. Um, and the only reason I put that roads and bridges metaphor in there, uh, it's a book that if you haven't taken a look, it's by Nadia Eggball, who was at GitHub for a long time. And the book is, it's a metaphor about um, critical digital infrastructure. And so how we can think about um, open source is playing a critical role in um, our digital infrastructure in the world around us. And it's just a really nice metaphor that kind of raises the conversation out of just, you know, a single type of open source community or a single community itself. And so if people have um, like thoughts on this as well as to how we might be able to abstract open source more broadly, I'd, I'd really be interested to hear it. And it doesn't have to be now, it could be later, some other time. And again, there is a uh, Slack channel. So if you're thinking about this and you want to share some of your thoughts, you can do that in the education channel. Mm -hmm. We would love that. 
And if I, I could not remember how to spell her name. So someone please help me with that if I got that wrong. Feel free to change that. Okay, any other things to add or questions, comments? In the chat, oh, this is the link to that, the, the what I was referring to. Oh, nice, yeah. Yeah, it's a really excellent book. Great, thank you. We'll yep. put in the minutes also. Oh, you did already, okay, good. Awesome, thank you. Okay, yeah, we have- There is okay. the follow-up book, uh, just to Sophia's comment. There is the follow-up book, Working in Public, also great. If somebody wants to link that here too, that would be great. I don't know if there's a digital version of it. Okay. No, it's a hard, hard copy working in the public that I got. Yeah. If we could get that um, book club thing going here at Chaos, we could add that both of those to yeah. the list. Those will be like great addition to the uh, that book club. Okay, so I'm gonna actually add that on here. Um, I think it would be fun to start this. And we've talked about it a lot, a lot. So um, how do, like, I know we wanted to read Tyranny of Metrics, but I never heard back from them on if we could purchase bulk copies for people. So how do we wanna handle that? How do we wanna, do we wanna just say everybody, who can get it, get it, and wants to read it, do it, or what? How should we, should, we do that? I, I say everyone, well, go ahead, Matt. I was gonna say, we should probably stick with the ones that are freely available to everybody. That would be great, yeah. The other thing that I've, here, I've seen here. where book clubs are hard because it takes people different amounts of time to read a book, and it's, um, yeah, it's just, it's just kind of hard because not everybody has time. But um, we could also, it doesn't have to be just books. We could do like articles, uh, research reports that come out by other people. Like, you know, that the one that the Linux Foundation released recently about uh, maintainers. We could do a, a book club uh, like articles mm -hmm. too. Like it doesn't have to be a whole book. We could do a, a around whole books, but we might be able to do them more often if we do something shorter. Yeah. I mean, I'll say like in the case of tyranny and metrics, it's 10 bucks on Amazon. And I have two copies because sometimes I order books forgetting I own them. I mean, if how many people have expressed interest? I don't know. Mary Blessing had a really good idea in the chat about like, if it's even just doing a podcast, where three oh. people had actually read the book, oh, for example, yeah. and talked about that. That would be a, that would be fun. It'd be a podcast you could you know open a bottle of wine, pour the wine, pretend like it's a real book club. Um, <laughs> I like that idea. Yeah, that's a great idea. That's a really great idea. And we're in the process. I, I like it. Talk about it here. Oh, go ahead. I was gonna say I love the idea, but if I'm drinking wine, I don't want to be recorded. Yeah. No, 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 no. I'm saying, right, it's not my drunk stats book. It's it's more like the, the people recording the podcast would not be drinking. I'm saying the people listening to the podcast <laughs> could, be like, well, could be drinking. Well, forget yeah. it then. I don't want to participate. Um, yeah. Changing my, the rules now. Wait a minute. We need a new podcast, My Drunk Chaos. <laughs> No, that's exactly All right. like, uh, we're no, getting, it's a, getting a little far off off track. Yeah, sorry, <laughs> sorry, but I will say if there's like, you know, I'll buy I'll buy 10 copies of Tyranny of Metrics if there's like 10, 11 people who want to do it. Like it's a really good book. I would say I I, I generally like the idea of keeping everything like only taking things that Free. are freely available. I but agree. I also I like both. So maybe we can alternate. So it's like so. There's always content in there that is free, but there's other books that are the the extra optional ones that people want to read. Because I think, like, I'm, I I would like to read this book, and I think it would be really fun to talk about it with members of this group. 
Um, but I also, I, I understand that suggestion. And I think that at least doing 50% or more of the suggestions are freely available. I would, I would be comfortable with that and kind of like you can opt in as you see fit. It might be available in a library. I'm not sure. I know that can be somewhat contentious. My partner's in a book club and he's often buying for the same book in his book club, in his library. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, I, I, we can try that, but I'm curious what other people think. I mean, I just think if there's, if there's books for sale that we want to do and people can't afford the 10 bucks because we have people all over the world, I'm, ha I'm happy to buy 10 copies of that one because it's 10 bucks each. It's like nothing. And I don't pay taxes on my Amazon. So um, do you think it would be, uh, so I'm just thinking of a way to coordinate this and like, like schedule or line up, line up the books that we're currently reading. Um, do we want to do it in a repo or on a, in a dock somewhere? What do you, what do you all think? Uh, just here is fine for now. We don't have yeah. an app. Yeah. Like, because we have, you know, if I just want to keep, like, if people have ideas, like, they need to go on a list somewhere so they don't get lost. Yeah. I'm just thinking that. I think a, a, a Google Doc pinned to the top of the book club channel. Isn't there a book club channel on Slack? No, but we can start one. No. <laughs> Matt, I feel like, yeah, every time. Yeah. No. <laughs> Matt, Matt and I are countervailing forces. Start a Slack channel. <laughs> get rid of Slack channels. <laughs> We could put it in general if that wouldn't is that too big, too noisy, or I don't know. No, I, I, I there's I, only a few things pinned to the top right now. So personally, I think the, the a really great first step is kind of all these ideas, the the uh podcast. Yep, yeah, chaos cast and like reflecting on, for example, the reports, the LF reports that Don had mentioned. And the other reason I say this is because um, Gary Gary White had, had brought kind of this up in one of the OSPO meetings. Like, just have you seen the, or I think that's how it came up, but just have you seen one of these reports? And there was a lot of discussion mm -hmm. on the reports and just kind of people's reflection on those reports. I honestly think it would be, pretty interesting for uh, chaos to provide some of that reflection. I think they might get, get listened to, especially if we're kind of helping um, like make the report like audible for people and what kind of some of the highlights we see out of it are. And then in particular, our, our angles towards metrics as well. I think that's really a, a really, really interesting idea. And as Don had pointed out, kind of rebooting chaos cast anyway, this might be a real good candidate for, um, maybe an episode or two. Mm -hmm. Does somebody want to link that here? Or I don't remember where those are. Did we talk about it in this meeting? Or was it? You it was in the OSPO. It was, it was in the OSPO meeting. And it came up just sort of organically. We were towards, like, we didn't have that much on the agenda. And I was like, anybody have anything else they want to talk about? And somebody was like, hey, you know, one of those, uh, I just read this LF report. Um, for maintainers and it had this interesting thing and what do you all of you think yeah. and it generated like a 20 minute discussion at the end of this meeting um, just because a lot of people had read it and found it really interesting and there were some some things people agreed with and disagreed with and I know Sophia had some insights com you know compared to some other reports so it, yeah it was a really interesting discussion I'm, I'm all for doing something like that as a podcast so I think we're we're gonna tee up the first the first um, reboot of the Chaos Cast is gonna be uh, just kind of a what's new in chaos because the last podcast that we recorded was January, uh, um, it's th this January or the, maybe even the past January. It might have been twenty twenty two. I think and it was so twenty. I think it was twenty three. Was it? It was twenty two last. I looked at while I was working on the website thing like providing chaos. Then I thought. We are not doing it, so I didn't put the details on it. So maybe if we are restarting, I have to add those details back in. Yeah, that. we are. We are restarting it. Okay, there was one January 2023. 
um, and then a couple in November 2022. But I feel like the, the project has changed so much. We've got context working groups. We have, um, you know, all the stuff going on with like Chaos Africa. And I feel like none of that had been talked about looking at the, the topics from some of the most recent podcasts. So I think that there's there's a lot of stuff that we can talk about in that first one. That's just kind of an update. And then I do think the LF reports one would be a really good second topic. So I've, I've taken a note to, I, I need to put together a, a list and get people to add stuff to it. So I'll, I'll work on that. That's on my to-do list. Thank you, Dawn. Yeah, that's awesome. So if someone, how would someone go about joining this or reading this or how do you want to do that, Don? Like if someone reads it and they want to participate in the, in the chaos cast, how would they just reach out to you? Uh, yes. Cause okay. we'll have to, what we'll have to do is we'll have to pick probably like three or four people. Cause we can't have everybody on the podcast. Right. Um, but yeah, if you're interested in talking about it, reach, reach out to me and I'll, we have a meeting tomorrow to come with a better process than talk to Don about stuff for the, the podcast. It used to be talk to Georg about stuff. Now we're gonna put together, we'll 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 figure out some sort of process and put something okay. together and make it easy uh, for people to propose for, topics. For the, for the podcast, I think there was a process already outlined. Uh, there is. Yeah. There is. There yeah, is a... we just need to, we just need to update it and kind of reboot yes. reboot it because it probably has some old stuff that were, you know, yeah. as, obsolete yeah. whatever and, and we need to delete elizabeth's name from that whole no i'm just kidding <laughs> elizabeth's name is a lot in that doc so we can absolutely yeah. update I, yeah I would... so our i yeah elizabeth and georg and i are going to meet uh tomorrow and just talk about what we need to update in that process so that we have a process that we can then share with people so that we have it updated and they know who's who's doing what so maybe don i would say once you are done and with the process Give me some uh, updates so that I can add it for the, you know, for uh, newcomers or anyone who wants to contribute to a certain section, they can contribute to chaos, chaos cost. And I'll add that to the knowledge base. Okay, cool. Awesome. All right. We have seven minutes left. Anything else to talk about? Such a productive meeting. I love it. Okay, well, I guess we can just close the meeting off then. Give your, your seven minutes back. <laughs> Thanks again, everybody, for showing up. Uh, it was great to see you. Yeah, good to see everybody. Same Have time great, next week. Bye -bye. Great rest of the day. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye.